Hello everyone, welcome back to Larry Vale's Traffic Division. So yeah, so we're here in the casino finally, where we couldn't get into earlier. And of course we have some interesting characters here to look at, but just before I get started, let me actually... Um, let me just leave for a minute and come back so that the music plays. So I, I loaded the game from a saved game, and if in this game, if you load from a saved game, the music doesn't play. Uh, it only starts playing when you enter the room, but it doesn't start playing if you load a save game that takes you to that room, so there we go. That's... now the music is playing. And yes, this is a Beatles song. I believe it's uh, Baby, You're a Rich Man, which is kind of fitting for the, um, <coughs> for the uh, subject of a casino, obviously. I think the, the songs in the game in general do try to kind of tie in with the events of the game. Like, uh, Paint It Black played when we were in a very dark room. And um, the the very beginning of the game uh, played "You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet," which is true because we had literally just seen like the opening cutscene to the game, and that's it. So yeah, um, I'm sick again, so I apologize if my voice sounds a bit uh, non-optimal. That's I, I don't know. I just I just keep getting sick. I'm I'm sorry, and I did, I don't want to keep waiting to get well to make more videos. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make the video. I think I think I can. Uh, Hopefully I can make a watchable video even if I'm even if I'm feeling a bit ill. So yeah, so we are here at the okay, the sign says it says Oh, it's hopeless. The lettering is too small to make out no matter how much you squint. That is true, I can't really read that either. Um alright, and we have here the one armed bandit. Funny, some of you thought he'd be Mexican. Hmm. Is that a racist remark? Could, could that be construed as racist? It probably could be. I, I, anything can be construed as racist in some way. Unfortunately, this is not the sort of slot machine that operates on the honor system. You'll need to insert money if you want to play, just like hundreds have done before you. Um, and we don't have any money. Well, hold on. We, we have this wallet, but I don't think there's any money in it. It's just our ID, isn't it? Oh. Okay, I stand corrected, apparently. I guess he put money in. Wait, what? I got... Huh? What? Um... Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is a bug in the game. I think I've just discovered a game bug. I think we weren't supposed to see that. Uh, sorry folks, just erased the last few seconds of your memory. Nothing to see here. Uh, I'm actually going to load the game because I think that... Uh, pretty sure that was not supposed to happen. Whatever happened there was uh, was not meant to happen that way. Let's just forget that ever happened, shall we? Okay, so where were we? So yeah, we saw the sign in the slot machine. Um... This is the climate control vent that earned you access back to the hotel. You don't much feel like going back in there. Of course, you don't much feel like being the social coolant of earwax either, but this is something you can regulate. That is true. Okay, uh, what's this here? This is... It's that mysterious area behind the bar. Looking back, you can see the bartender mixing somebody a drink. It looks rather complicated. It'll probably be, be busy for some time. Which I think is the game's way of saying that we won't be able to order a drink here. You attempt to retour the bar and pat the busy bartender's rear in a supportive manner, but stop yourself. You've lost too many friends that way. Don't bother interrupting him. You need to keep a clear head if you have to continue dealing with Charlie all day. Alright. Also, we seem to have disappeared for some reason. That's interesting. Oh, this this guy standing here at the bar, his uh, character box covers up whatever's behind him, so if you're standing behind him, he covers you up. That's another... That's another bug in the game. Yeah, the game still has... It's kind of funny, because this is actually version... Uh, well, it doesn't say here, but I think we saw on the title screen. I think I think we saw this was version 3.0 of the game, so obviously there were a handful of bugs which have been spotted and fixed here, but... Uh, yeah, there's still a few which went under the radar. Anyhow, okay. Uh, so, let's see. Whom do we have here? This is... The Dealer! He's delighting very much in taking Charlie's money. He's delighting so much, in fact, that you're lucky you can't see him from the waist down. And that was too much information, but okay. Shall we go ahead and capitalize on that information now that we have it? Don't ask the man who's going to try to do his job. All right. He doesn't reply. He's supposed to keep his eyes on the players at all times. Yeah, you can 
can talk while keeping your eyes on somebody, can't you? All right. I don't think we. I don't think we do much with the dealer. But guess who this is? It's Charlie Stryker, your assistant in only, in only the loosest sense of the word. And we can look at his various features too. Charlie must delight in walking into a barber shop and announcing, "Give me the fifth grader." Eh. I actually have hair like this. I've always had hair like this. I guess people say that it's either childish or that it's somehow associated with the 70s because it looks like a Beatles haircut, but uh, I've always had hair like this. I, I, mean, I like having bangs and I like having, you know, hair on the side instead of just having like these shaved flat sides that a lot of young people like to have. I'm gonna, I don't like that. I don't like shaved flat sides. I think that looks stupid, even though they're very popular among young people. Anyway, um... You'd like to pull him around by the hair right about now, but you, you you read a book you read a book on Gandhi once and so just can't bear to do it. Um I don't know what pulling him around by the hair has to do with Gandhi, but okay, fair enough. Alright. Something very unnerving about a man who wears his sunglasses indoors. What a shame. Don't bother taking them. If you confiscated, confiscated everything an officer of the law shouldn't be wearing while on duty, Charlie would be lucky if you retained his skivvies. All right, let's see. Can we look at his... All right, so we can't look at his nose or his mouth. It's that hideous overshirt. You wish to the heavens you could just roll it up in that ludicrous carpet and burn them both at once. Eh, is it really that bad? I mean, I guess he just doesn't like the color, but I mean, come on, it's it's all right. I mean, it's not a... It's kind of like a... 80s neon sort of Miami Vice color. It's like a bright cyan kind of color like you get in four color CGA graphics. It's not that bad. Tempting, but you can't expect to go around tearing the shirts off men and still maintain that butch image you've been perfecting. Yeah, all right, all right. What about this? Finally getting a good look at it, you realize his undershirt is one of those popular Rob Blanc m merchandising gimmicks. Rob Blanc is that handsome action hero who started out eating rodents for coinage and currently earns a sizable paycheck for acting in computer games. What's he got that you don't have? Now, Larry, you can't own that. You can't own one until that check you mail for a twenty-four ninety-nine clears. All right. All right. What do we have here? We have uh, Charlie is all ready to roll the dice again. What crucial piece of crime-stopping equipment can he lose next? Hmm. Seems that he might be losing the game. Can we take the dice? The dice aren't allowed to leave the table. Any damage you do to them will have to remain localized. Okay. Hint, hint. I guess. You may think he needs a good punch in the kisser right about now, but the commissioner probably won't agree. Or maybe he will, who knows. Well, 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 look who's gambling. Hey, look who's here. Not much of a surprise, really. I was near certain you'd survive. Near certain was good enough to leave me in there alone? I don't see how it would have been any more successful if we both died. But I didn't die. So then what are you griping about? Uh, well, you know, I mean, yeah, I survived, but it would have been nice to have some help. It was pretty rude of you to abandon me like that. I didn't have much of a choice, Larry. She shoved you inside and the door closed by itself. What did you want me to do, Larry? Not immediately assume you'd handle it yourself? Not nail planks over the door so she can't get me too? Not pretend it never happened and go play casino games? Um, for crying out loud, man, I'm only human. Besides, you handled her okay. No, I didn't. I couldn't disable her. She's still active somewhere. We have to stop her. I'd love to help, but it's rude to get up in the middle of a game. Charlie, you bring a whole new meaning to, word, to the word partner. He kind of had a point at the beginning, like when he said she she shoved you in and the door closed by itself, what was I supposed to do? Okay, he started off almost having a point, but then it just kind of went downhill from there. Um, gambling on duty isn't quite kosher, my friend. Fortunately, I'm not Jewish. No, no, what I meant was... Okay, you got me. I'm Jewish, but I'm severely ashamed of it, so it doesn't count. Um... Uh, Listen, all I want you to do is stop gambling. No, sir. I'd be a fool to get up now. Why? Are you winning? Hell no. I just lost dozens of rolls in a row. 
Which means I now have the law of averages on my side. The law of the average sucker is more like it. Half of one, two quarters of the other. I don't think, uh... I don't think it's quite how... Is it actually how it works? I, I'm, I'm not a gambler, so I don't really know. I I don't think... If, you, if you're on a losing streak, I don't think you should just keep following that streak all the way down. I don't think that's the usual advice that gamblers are supposed to follow, but I don't know. I mean, I understand what he's saying. I mean, obviously probability states that if you keep losing, eventually you will win at some point, but I don't think that's how it works. Uh, you are one useless dolt. You're pretty prissy today, aren't you? You locked me inside a closet with a bloodthirsty machine. Haha, uh -huh, yes, I certainly did. Uh, those were the days. All right, so yeah, they, they mentioned in that cutscene that there was a cell phone which Charlie might have. Let's see. Give me the cell phone. I want to make, I want to call the station. I'd love to. Really, I would. But I lost it in a, ga in a hand of cards. Great. I guess I'll just go to talk to the management. Actually, I lost it to a guest. He's a roving gambler. Funny thing about these guys. The way they take all your money and all. Funny, funny. Uh, I don't think that's funny, sir. I'm not, not in agreement with your assertion that that is funny, actually. You did what with the cell phone? I lost it to a grifter. What, do you have bouillon cubes in your ears? I'm just kind of wondering why. Hey, it wasn't my fault. The guy cheated. Of course he cheated. That's what grifters do. Well, I can't go try to get it back. Why not? He's going to want to gamble for it. And after this roll, if I lose, I'll be out of money. So I guess it's up to you, old chap. Um, Charlie is kind of like Cedric. He's, he's supposed to come along to help, but most of the time he just gets into trouble and makes things worse. And besides doing everything yourself, now you also have to bail him out of trouble every time he gets into trouble. Uh, okay, how do you expect me to get it back? You'll have to catch him cheating. He's good, though. Where can I find him? I'll go get it right now. No, 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 my friend. That's not the way friendship works. One hand scratches the other. You wash my back, I'll wash yours. Oh, no, you won't. Fine, suit yourself. I'm not the one who wants the cell phone so badly. So, wh what do you want from me? Just help me win. Help you cheat, you mean? Yeah, yeah, let's not get hung up on semantics here. What do you suggest we do? I don't know, you figure it out. I guess we could weigh the dice. Why? So we can see if they need to die it? No, not that kind of weighing. I'm counting on you, Larry. This is the last roll I can afford. I'm gonna see if I can find anybody I hate more. Good luck. Thanks. I'll need every bit of it. Yeah, I'll need it. Uh, okay, so... Again, a fairly obvious clue, we need to weight the dice. So, again, I'm not a gambler, but I mean, I can I imagine, I can kind of understand what it means. I mean, you... Uh, the dice are supposed to be perfectly uh, symmetrical. They're not supposed to be heavier or wider or anything on any particular side. They should be perfect cubes and absolutely, uni absolutely uniform in terms of their mass distribution. So the center of mass should be exactly in the center of the of the die. Uh, of the die. I, I, I use die as a singular. Some people say a dice, but I say one die and plural dice, that's just how I was taught, but maybe it's, I don't know if that's correct or what. Anyway, um, so weighing dice, as far as I understand, I mean, you can imagine what it means. It means basically putting some kind of a heavy weight on the opposite side of the, of the die side that you want to come up. So if you want to roll like a six, for example, you'd put uh, something heavy on whatever is directly opposite from the six so that the dice will have a, a higher tendency to fall down with that side up. 
works. It's kind of physics. If you change the center of gravity or center of mass, then that part will want to kind of come down more, and that will increase your chances of getting the dice roll that you want. So we need to we need to weight the dice somehow. So I don't really have much that we can. Let's see. Can I cut them with the scissors? No. Can I shoot them to make holes in them? No. I can't shoot Charlie either. What a shame. All right, I think we need to come back later. I think we're missing something from our inventory that we will need to uh, to actually do that uh, that whole thing with the dice. All right, so who's this here? It's Ufardi, the local forgerist with a thing for Peter Laurie. So, um, uh, <laughs> the Quest for Glory games had a big thing going for Peter Laurie. They had a couple of characters who were um, based on his characters, one of course being Ugardi from um, Quest for Glory 2, who was basically completely ripped off from Casablanca. And um, here's kind of like a parody of him, except he's called Ufardi. Not very uh, imaginative uh, or mature, but who said this game was? And if you touch it, with, oh, I think I think that's the carpet. There we go. Hey, does he come along in goose you while you're trying to work? Well, no, he uh, no, he does not. All right. <clears throat> ah, Rick, wonderful to see you again. I'm not Rick. Yeah, yeah, I get that a lot actually. Uh, let's see. Will the I'm from Tampa line work twice in a row? Would you like to get back? I'm sorry. Back to Tampa. I can get you there. No, I'm quite happy here, thanks. I have friends in the Border Patrol, you see. Weak links, if you hear what I say. I can smuggle you across the border next sundown. What border? You can walk right in anytime you please. Yes, but would you want to? You're a diseased little man. I was going to say, I'm assuming this game takes place in the USA, in which case Tampa is not a in a foreign country, like it is a city in the same country. There should be no border control getting there. Um, yeah, so Peter Lorre was uh, known for playing really scumbag characters. In real life, he was a pretty nice guy, but he was he just had like a very... Uh, he, he was kind of a... I don't mean to be insulting, but he was kind of a small guy, and he had a, a rather... Um, unattractive sort of appearance. Kind of like Steve Buscemi. He, he sort of did, kind of like how Steve Buscemi always plays really oddball characters. Uh, Peter Lorre kind of does the same thing. Like he just, he just has had this very slimy sort of demeanor to him, even though I don't think he was, he was that way in real life, but he just, he just sort of had this, this very uh, wheedling or kind of, kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sycophantic or flattering kind of voice. Um, that always that made him well suited to characters who are just very flattering and sort of uh, sort of like like, like really bootlicking kind of characters who are always very acted very servile but were actually really scumbags uh, secretly and just didn't want to show it. They, they acted servile to hide the fact that they were actually criminals. But those were the kind of characters he tended to play, and of course, this is a similar kind of character now in this game. So who are you? I go by the name Ufarti. Why on earth would you do something like that? If you don't want to do business, you don't have to do business. Um, what are you doing here? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, yes, all of the above. I am a forgerist, my friend. I assist people with things such as driver's licenses, gun licenses, fish licenses. Fish licenses? You criminals have sunk to a new all-time low. Any sort of official document is my specialty. Can I interest you in these two letters of transit? Which is another reference to Casablanca. Have you not noticed my badge yet? I'm Larry Vale's traffic division, and you're under arrest. Arrest me if you like. Uh, okay. I but be forewarned that you need me to complete this game. Do I? Oh yes, I'm downright crucial. How do I know you're not putting me on? Just look at yourself. Traffic division. Just how far do you think that will get you? Well, it got me this far. Here, 
you go do your little policeman thing. Come back and see me when you have something to forge. Hmm. Perhaps you can help me. I certainly thought I could. So what is it you'd like me to forge? Oh, you know, this and that. Narrow it down a bit. Uh... You don't know, do you? I don't think I do, no. How about you just come back when you decide? Just hand me anything you'd like me to alter. I'll do the rest. Thank you, Farty. You're the bestest friend I ever had. Alright, so as we saw in that curious bug of the game, I guess he will reproduce our police ID, except instead of making it a faith reproduction, he put somebody else's name and also rank and, and actually department on it. Let's see, can we uh, have him forge... Can, can he forge guns? Apparently not. Uh, this key, can he duplicate keys? No. This other key? No. Can he sharpen our scissors? No. The whistle? No. Uh, what was this again? This was... Oh, it's the janitor's key card. Can you do something with this? No. Okay. So, I don't know if there is some additional clue that you're supposed to... supposed to know to do this, or if you just kind of think, okay, well, forgery, well, we'll start to forge, obviously, this. Um... You hand you farty your traffic division identification, and within moments he has your new and improved ID ready. Police. Oh, that's interesting. We lost the, uh... Okay, that's interesting. So if you click the... Okay, so that, that's really obviously a bug in the game's logic. If you click your ID on the slot machine, you get the FBI badge, but if you do the right thing, what you're supposed to do, and give it to your farty... Um, you, you do get the FBI badge, but you lose the... So he... So basically, actually, you can kind of cheat the game and keep both IDs, but obviously you're not supposed to... That's not how it's supposed to work. You're not supposed to just get another ID out of thin air. He's supposed to modify the existing ID. But okay, fine. I'll take it. So, it's Yifardi's Master Forgery. You're now Agent Scalder of the FBI. Um... Does he already not accept payment, uh, or expect payment for that? I would think, in fact, I'm very sure, like, I'm very, very sure that a guy like Yufardi would, would demand payment up front and not just give us the forgery with, with the idea that we'll pay him later. But, uh, okay, it's obviously a contrivance for the game. Okay, we've seen most of the things in this room, but let's, uh, finish off by talking to this gentleman here. Ooh, extreme close-up. It's a face only a mother could love, which means this man won't be doing any dating as far as legality is concerned. Don't go and stir at the man's shortcomings. He's down enough as it is. A necktie, because it's also important to look professional as you're, as you're downing alcohol and vomiting in public restrooms. It's a button-down shirt. One day you hope to wear the very same color to the altar. Uh, altar. That's... This is a verb, but what he's talking about is an altar with an A. Um, it's a glass of something that looks rather tasty. The stranger seems to have a very strong grip on it. Can we take it? You try to take the glass, but the man is unwilling to let you have it. He says it tastes too good to let go of. All right. You gently caress his cheek to let him know everything will be okay. Uncle Larry will find him a date. You don't need to take any of his hair. You've got so much already that it runs down the sides of your face. That's true. Larry does have some fairly killer sideburns. Just as you're about to introduce the lonesome stranger to what is known as the purple nurple, you remember that you've never been on the giving end of never been on the giving end of one before at halt due to the inexperience. Sure, you could grip him by the necktie and hold him up like those action heroes you always pretend you are in front of the mirror, but that would probably require strength. That is true. Um, hello? What do you want from me? Do you want to laugh at me? Rub my face in the dirt? Spit in my eye? No, I... Because you're too late. Life's done it already. All I've got is myself and my drink. That's not true. You've got that big old bald... <laughs> You've got that big bald patch, too. Something tells me you're not a missionary. Why so long in the face, chum? Genetics. Are you happy now? I admit it, I'm ugly. No, I didn't mean that. An officer of the law should have a little more compassion. Now, wait a minute, I didn't try to insult you. 
Just remember, you're not Charles Atlas yourself. Okay, let's not go on any further now. Little old Sergeant Cyburns comes by to insult me. I think I'm gonna hate you. As presumably many people have in the past. Uh, hey, uh, can you help me destroy a killer robot? Probably not. I can't do anything. Behind every powerful man, there is a woman. That is true. Look behind me and see how powerful I am. Oh, come on now. Having a girlfriend isn't everything. I hope. No, but it's more than I've got, and that's all right by me. <laughs> what if I found you somebody? Would that cheer you up? Probably, but something tells me not to hold my breath. When it comes to women, I doubt a guy like you has wealth to spread. Hey, do you want to insult me, or do you want me to help you? I don't care. I feel better either way. You can't see it, but I'm gesturing very suggestively towards the gentleman at the moment. Uh, what do you have to do to get a drink around here? Just to ask. But right now the barman is busy mixing something for the dealer. Oh, how long will he be? A while, probably. Why? I need a drink. An officer in uniform lo lo begging to get plastered. No wonder I hate the world. Hey, it's not for me. Who is it for, then? I don't quite know yet. I just thought I would keep it in my pocket until I need it. You adventure gamers are all alike. Pick up everything that isn't nailed down. Never earning an honest living, just taking whatever you cross. Sometimes that's just a way to get things done. Whatever. Give me doom any day. Trust me, I'd love to. So, you come here often? If they didn't fumigate, I'd never leave. Why don't you hit the town? Meet some folks, have a good time. I'm loathed and despised by all I encounter. You're a very depressing individual. I'm available for forever. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, I, I kind of like this guy because who hasn't felt like this guy? We've all felt like this guy at some point in our lives, and yet, you know, when you look at him from the outside, you see how self-defeating his behavior is, how, how self-defeating the attitude is, because it really does make people like him less. If he wants people to like him, um, he'll need to do something to make people like him more, because that kind of attitude is, is going to drive people even more, like, drive even more people away. I understand how he feels. I've, I've felt that way. I think probably most people have at some point, but you realize when you look at this guy, he, he's got to change something. He can't wait for something to happen to him. He's got to change something. He's got to have enough initiative to change something on his own, because otherwise it's never going to happen. Uh, can I have your drink? No. It tastes good, and right now it's the only thing bringing me joy. Hmm. What if it didn't taste good anymore? Then nothing would be bringing me joy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But I could have the drink, right? You're really focused on getting this drink from me, aren't you? In a game this small, you get starved for something to do. <laughs> um... Fortunately, the game does not have the option of giving the gentleman a hand job because that would pro probably be something that brings him joy. Um, but that is, thankfully, not the solution to this puzzle. I'm gonna, I'm, so I, we can be thankful for that, and we'll go be thankful that we are not this gentleman here. I'll sit here and do the same. Oh, touche, sir. <laughs> all right, so. All right, all right, all right. So I think we're done here for now. Um, let's go ahead and get outside. And actually, um, boy, I spent a while in there. That's already, uh, it's really almost like a whole video's worth. Um, do I want to do something more? No, that's okay. I'll leave it at that. That's actually, yeah, that's, that's like a half hour video right there. So, um, talked to Casino 
I talked to my peeps in the casino. All right, that'll be enough for now, I guess. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was the casino in uh, Larry Vale's Traffic Division. I'll see you folks next time for more exciting action in this game. Until then, take care, everyone, and bye-bye for now.